All right, we're seeing what happens whenever you take a barrel apart. All right, Tommy. I don't know about this. They gotta have mercy on your soul. You can already see how much loose it is. Totally fell apart. Oh. Damn, dude. That's cool, man. Only one person's gonna get the bunghole, though. <laughs> Joe, you always get the bunghole. You're my bunghole boy. Let me tell you about how that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I totally have come to help. As far as this edit is concerned. <laughs> A few interesting things about that barrel that Tommy and Spicoli Joe and I cut apart. And the, 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 Spicoli Joe? Yeah. The, the rings on the barrel, we cut those, and it wasn't until the very last ring that got cut and it just fell apart into oh, yeah. like dozens of pieces. That's when you realize that barrels are not adhered together with anything other than those rings and the tension that yeah, holds them it in. was it's only tension. And for yeah. whatever reason, I was thinking, well, maybe they do some type of bonding, not glue, nope. not a chemical-based thing, some nope. type of special wood bonding. As a matter of fact, if you uh, let a barrel that's been used dry out too long, the rings will just fall off on their own. Yeah, now I know I didn't come across in the video because the microphone's going to adjust automatically. But it was about as loud as a shotgun. Once those rings popped, there's so much tension. <laughs> Super loud. So the other interesting thing that I only learned this recently, Angel Share episode with Cooper. Mitch Weddle. Mitch Weddle. And he was talking about how the inside is charred. It's mm -hmm. just burnt. This is a barrel from Balconis. This is one of their small five gallons sure. that they used to use before they switched to larger barrels. Let's see if we can turn this up so you can see. There we go. Now you can see. Look at that. That's a level three char from them. How many char levels are there? Well, there's seven levels uh, listed by, for example, the independent stave company okay. who uh, does a lot of barrel work. It's a barrel making company. For a lot of the biggest distilleries. Fair enough. So uh, independent stave lists seven options when you're trying to choose from their barrels. Right. And so it can go all the way from a to heavy toast all the way up to what they call a distiller's char, uh, number five, which is just some serious char. So there's different things inside of wood yeah. that make it good for aging whiskey, yeah. right? There's the cellulose structure of American oak, which makes it particularly well suited right. for holding liquids. Yeah. Inside uh, the wood itself, you've got uh, hemocellulose, you've got lignin, and you've got tannins. Okay. And oak lactones, by the way. When you char hemocellulose, yeah. and you get it up above certain temperatures, it breaks down the wood sugars inside of wood. Okay. And that allows access to the sugars in the aging process. That's what will make whiskey sweeter. Hmm. Now, the char will also add that nice color to whiskey, the golden color. If you've ever had bourbon that had notes of like brown sugar, caramel, toffee, all those kinds, yeah. that's because the hemocellulose is broken down from the charring. Now, I was asking you this earlier. That would not happen in a new barrel. Here's why lignin's important. That's where the flavor of vanilla comes from in whiskey. Oh. Right? So we actually know down to the individual like components of wood, it's Which, also spicy flavors. What's contributing to the yes. various flavors. Right, and so as you char lignans in the wood, mm -hmm. that opens up the flavors of the spices and the wood notes. It smells really good, by the um, way. It does smell good, and what's, doesn't what's it? Super, and the smoky flavor on what, a bourbon. What's super interesting about this is you smell it and you're, oh, I've totally had these notes in whiskey before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's absolutely where those And this, by the way, was a blue corn bourbon barrel from Balconis. So you're actually yeah, smelling smell bourbon. You got black stuff on your nose now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. The tannins, which are all the kind of dry woody notes, right? Yeah. Those lessen the more you char. 
So if you age a whiskey in only brand new oak, yeah. with no charring, yeah. it's gonna just be all tannin, dry, woody flavors, but none of the sweet sugars and things like that. Okay. Right now. The last one is oak lactones. They're they're responsible for like a coconut flavors. Oh, you like and that. things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the higher the char, the less impact. Okay. What some say is that you can toast a barrel to bring certain things out, mm -hmm. and then char it after that to bring other things. And they insist that that alters the flavor compounds available to the aging whiskey. So rather than just charring, just char just straight the in raw wood. First, you prepare it by yeah. giving it a little toast. Yeah, and then you then char. you char it. Oh, I was asking you this earlier. I was like, hey, can we pull down some some whiskeys? Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully, maybe three of the same kind of whiskey that is similar. But we know this one was aged in like a three char. This one was in like a one. This one was toasted. Maybe another one that was like a really high, like a five or mm -hmm. something. And you said no. They that's that's really hard information to suss out because most distillers are really secretive about this. Yeah, there's a lot of, the bigger distillers will tell you they use a number three char, but they won't tell you if they do anything else. Like, so it's not a fair comparison. Yeah. Because they might have toasted first, then done a number three char. It might be their own variation of a number three char. Like Jack Daniels, when they do their own, uh, it's different time limits than the stave and they're using different kinds of flame, like wood burning fire versus gas fire. Yeah. There's all these variations in that. So. Whiskey version. Can I get a snicked of Logan? <laughs> so there's only Thanks. one thing I want to do in our distillery based on everything that you've talked about. Oh, I already know. Very simple experiment. The same barrels. Yeah. Age it for the same length of time, yep. just in different charts. Yes. I totally want to do that too. Yeah. Now the trick is to find a cooperage that will make small barrels and send us one each of all those different chars, because that's normally not a thing. Right. Or we but, hey, just chart ourselves. We chart ourselves. Let's do it. We could totally go amateur hour let's, and just, you want to try? Let's try. We, we need to practice. Let's char. We're going to char these small staves. Yep, from a Balconis barrel. Yeah. And uh, Rex, you're going to need to stand by with water. So your job is when I say, okay, good, yeah. to just spray it down and make sure it stops burning. I can do that. Traditionally, it's done for a certain amount of seconds mm -hmm. because they know how hot to make the fire. Yeah. And they, they're making a fire of some kind and they're setting a barrel onto it. Now on automated systems, this is happening in warehouse where barrels get lined up, chunk over these gas flames mm -hmm. and then go and just flame it out for however long and then turn off and immediately they sh barrels shift sideways and get and hose down with water and then they go back into the line to get the heads put on. Okay. And you know what? I'm actually going to use Independent Stave's chart guide that they use as a visual guide. Can people see that guide online somewhere? No. They don't put it anywhere for public consumption. So we're gonna start with just a light toast and we'll start with that one over there. Sure. I think it cooked the focus on this camera. Okay, so we put up the barrel staves and these are close approximations of the char levels that you would get. Yeah, this one could have been a little darker, but we were getting there. Okay, so this, is this a toast end or, yeah, this is toast, that's toast, and then we start getting to the char? Yeah, light char, light char, and then a medium char, heavy char, number three, number four, what they call distiller's version. Okay, and this is the most common, this is what I think every- That's the most common. If you go look at the, as a matter of fact, look. From the small barrels. Yeah. From the small barrel, this is, I think, the closest approximation. Remember that bits have come off just from us flaking, so this is the part that you're gonna be closest to. Yeah, right there. Yep, so I think we did pretty good. This has actually been used, too. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you char? Congeners are these compounds that are created that gives whiskey most of its real flavor. It's the flavor components. Now. It's not all good. <laughs> like sulfur, for example, can be created during that time. And a lot of times distillation will remove a lot of those bad flavors. But of the ones that are left, very often barrel char will act as a filter to get rid of the other unwanted flavors. Mm. So at the end of the day, the thing that makes whiskey special and different than most other spirits is the wood stuff, right? Mm -hmm. 
is getting that wood flavor in there. That's right, magical, magical wood. You know how ice, if you're trying to cool down a drink, uh -huh. you want to have chipped up small pieces of ice. If you want to do it fast, yeah. yes. That's why you do shake it. Rapid cocktails. aging of whiskey is the holy grail of whiskey. Yeah. Figuring out how to do that well. That's a whole other discussion. Now, in theory, the same way that chipped up ice more rapidly cools a drink, mm -hmm. chipped up uh, pieces of wood can more rapidly age a whiskey. <laughs> so bullshit. <laughs> That's so not true. We don't know unless we try. That's so not true. Let's find out. So, we're gonna do some monkey shoulder. We're going to rapid age it with this brave new experimental aging method. The type of wood is very important. Is that right? Yeah. It needs to be white oak. Yeah. Wait, 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 what's that? It's white oak. From what? From the staves we were we were chopping up yesterday, so. Oh God, that's just sawdust. Just, this is a little small bit. Here, hold the camera. Oh man. Oh, what's... No, 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 don't, don't oh God. <laughs> White oak. Right. Oh god. This is rapid aging. The monkey shoulder. <laughs> it's like the worst porridge ever. I'm not gonna be able to get liquid out of that. It's like a slurry. <laughs> like a nice slurry. <laughs> We're making oatmeal cookies. Alright, you got a glass? <sighs> wait. It's dry wheat. Daniel, we have to cook off all the alcohol. No, 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 Let's no, no. The There's no liquid left. Let's get the blowtorch. There's no liquid left. Blowtorch! There's not gonna be anything to drink. There's good, it's gonna be so good. I think that's as good as we're gonna get. Oh, there's steam coming, or there's smoke coming off it. It's still burning. All right, it's gonna be really hot, you need to. Oh good, what do we end up with? That looks very aged. Dibs on the patenting of the process when it turns out to be amazing. Dibs? Uh. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, that's the good stuff. Are you excited? I think that's probably the wrong word to be using this right now. This is gonna be the smaller pieces, the ligmans and the cellulose. That's like as dark as a 30 year old whiskey. It came after and so it was caused by. That's the, one of the fundamental logical fallacies. We just aged something in 10 minutes that's as dark and assumingly flavorful as a 30 year old whiskey. Let's just say that because this has a frothy edge like a beer, I'm pretty certain it's no longer a real whiskey. You cannot put a price tag on the level of innovation that's in this glass right now. Oh, I can. <laughs> mm, yeah, this smells. Is it smoky? It smells like creek water. No. Yeah. No. But with a whole bunch of uh, caramel whiskey notes. Oh, flat soda. It's like flat root beer. This is 32 year old. <laughs> this, this is Weasel. basically McAllen M. Basically. Nah. It's not that bad. It tastes like really woody oh. water. Oh, it's getting more bitter. Yeah, it is. Whoa. Oh yeah, it's Whoa, escalating. It's ramping up the bitter. <laughs> My mouth just went dry. Oh,